Tonight's theme allows you to fish without a boat. You can also spread out and cover more ground and cool off pretty easily from the heat as well. Tonight, we're talking about wading here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, which starts right now. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Welcome back to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, where your hosts, Brie Gabrielle, and of course, Captain Rick Murphy, with a fun-filled show kicking off Father's Day weekend. And Rick, there's really no better way to catch fish than by being one with the fish. So let's talk a little bit about wading. You're absolutely right. You know, Brie, the cool part about this time of year, if you decide to bail out, maybe you want to wade in the Keys and go catch a bonefish, certainly cools down the Definitely. temperature of your body. It really allows you to be more one with the fish as <laughs> well. I really enjoy waiting. There's definitely some pros to it. Okay, yes. well, we have a special guest from Sirius XM Marine joining us a little later in the show, but let's say hi to Dave Farrell at the CCA Workbench to see what uh, waiting gear he doesn't have for us. Well, I've got okay. a lot up here because I used do. to do it quite a bit. You know, I was a poor boy for a long time and didn't have a boat, so I did a lot of strolling and, uh, I tell you what, I had some of my best days ever was, was wading, even after I got a boat. So. Yeah. Feeling like a turtle with all this Just because you have a boat, that means you have to stop wading. Well, you That's sure true. are stealthy. You can pretend you're a pole boy again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, our first captain up tonight resides in the real legend, Central East region, and he is ready to get this weekend started. Let's go wading, Jim. Well, you know, Bree, the guys here in the Central East region, if you're wade fishing, there's there's a lot of areas you can go strolling like Dave was talking about. We've got some good hard pack bottom in a lot of the Indian River and the Banana River areas. The Ski Lagoon, not quite as much, but there are some shoals and bars that you can wade out there as well. The first thing to remember is to wear a good pair of wading boots. Uh, and remember, always do the Stingray Shuffle. The last thing you want to do is get stung by one. The second thing, especially if you plan to wade in the North Indian River or the Southern Mosquito Lagoon, Keep your eyes peeled for alligators because we've got some good sized lizards out there that roam these flats and they like to catch redfish just as much as you do. So just kind of keep an eye on them, especially if you get a little farther away from your boat or a little farther away from shore, uh, just be aware that they can be out there. The main reason, the main reason, like Rick was talking about, well, there's two reasons. One, you cool down because it's Africa hot out there right now. And two, you can wade fish and you can get right up on some of the fish sometimes. And so. You don't have to, uh, you don't have, you can be really stealthy. You don't have to make as long a cast. Your presentation can be nice and quiet with a lighter lure. You catch more fish a lot of times. And like Rick was saying earlier, a boat is a great way to get to a place to where that you can get out and then wade and catch more fish. So many of the real legends anglers catch big trout and snook by sneaking up on them just in this fashion. And live baits and lures are obviously uh, your choice, whatever you like to use. but. The thing is, is you're getting into the area and you're stealthy and they're not knowing you're there. And that's the most important. Now, my first inshore species today, or my inshore species is redfish. And all three lagoons, we have had a resurgence of redfish in, in these lagoons here in the last week, week and a half. You want to find overhanging mangrove branches anywhere from Vero Beach, Wabasso, Sebastian. They're holding good numbers of fish right now. And a lot of those fish are slot and under slot. In the middle portion of my region, target the same reds around mullet schools on the shallow flats. And in the northern portion of my region, fish near oyster bars and undercut banks, especially those from about right around Orange Island, northward up to Calalisa Creek. Now for the bigger bulls, the haulover area is still pretty good this week. Huge redfish in the 40 to 50 inch class are still feeding on, on bait fish up there. Crabs, croakers, pinfish, jumbo shrimp. Uh, take a variety because they do change their, their habit from or what they want to eat from day to day. Um, but you know, the main thing is, is keep an eye on the wind. If the wind's coming from the east, fish the east side of the canal. If it's coming from the west, fish the west side. They like to sit on the, in, on the part where the water's coming into the canal best. That's where they seem to be uh, st stacking up. And I've got a picture here of a nice big bull redfish uh, that uh, was recently Ooh. caught uh, right there at Hallover Canal. Nice, uh, pretty fish. Looks like gold to me, bub. Let's go offshore. Yeah, a big old pumpkin. I love those <laughs> fish. They get so gold sometimes. It's just awesome to see them. But uh, swinging offshore, Rick, you know, the dolphin action, is, uh, it was pre pretty good on the new moon. And then the bite kind of seemed to slow down a little bit. Now we've got this full moon. They Leading into the full moon, they started to bite a little bit again. After the full moon, here's what you're going to need to do. 
make sure that you're going out later in the day because the bite is not going to be early in most cases until we get four or five days away from the moon. So the afternoon bite can be really good. And a bonus to that is you might get some blackfin tuna. Pink and white, blue and white, and zucchini colored skirts over a small to medium valley who are working really good. And don't overlook a red and black or purple and black or even an all black skirted valley who on your downrigger. And remember in the middle of the day, put that thing way down there. If you're in 120 or 140 feet of water, put that thing down 100 feet. Guys are actually catching, on occasion, they're catching dolphin while they're bottom fishing. So these fish are traveling deep right now, especially on this full moon phase. The other thing that we have offshore is king mackerel and they're striking slow trolled, you know, live baits, the so natural baits. Most of the fish have moved, most of the bigger fish have moved inshore. They've moved off of those 90 foot reefs. They've moved into the 70 foot or even all the way into the shallow beaches, the 30, 40, 50 foot uh, reefs uh, and some of those wrecks. And then of course, uh, around bait pods that are right on the near, the near shore waters. The larger fish are gonna stay there for a couple of, you know, a couple of days while they spawn. And then they're gonna go back out to the reefs again. Uh, and so, you know, places like the Canaveral buoy line, the tide line at Sebastian and the tide line at Ponce are great places to catch kingfish. I've got a picture here of one that we recently caught on a live pogey as well. Thanks, Jim. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Rodan Marine Systems hotspots from the Central East region. Jim says that inshore, the Bull Reds and Hallover Canal use live or cut crab, mullet, or a croaker on the upcurrent side of the canal. And then offshore, gag groupers on the reef in 180 to 250 feet of water using live grunts, croakers, or menhaden on a standard bottom rig, Bree. All right, well, there are certain species the Garmin Panhandle region will bless your waiting mess with. So let's get Captain Pat Deneen on the line to find out what those inshore species are. Let's hear it, Pat. Hey, Bree. Uh, yeah, the Florida panel, we really do have some excellent waiting opportunities throughout its entirety. Uh, primarily target fish are going to be trout, redfish, and flounder, but, you know, Jack Gravel, Spanish mackerel, and other species are also caught definitely while waiting. Moving east to west through our area, the St. Joe Bay is well known for its waiting potential. It's got miles and miles of shoreline, extensive hard bottom and sand of sand and grass flats. You know, the state park there, it's got good access and good waiting and also good fishing for trout, redfish, and flounder. The Panama City Bay systems offer similar, you know, bottom habitat in our bay, Choctahatchee Bay, uh, Garson, or not Garson Point, White Point, and um, Elliott's Point are both really good spots with good good hard bottom, you know, grass, trout fish, and red fish, and, and good access. Santa Rosa Sound has the uh, National Seashore, the Naval Live Oaks access. I mean, all in all, it's really good access i mean for for for, for wade fishing and it's very popular and it's a good time of year to do it uh staying inshore tarpon fishing is starting to get good throughout the region the fish are migrating east to west along the gulf front beaches uh, plenty are being caught off the beach piers as well so you don't need a boat to play uh, most anglers use stout spinning tackle a rod designed to throw a swim bait or a live bait you know 30 to 40 pound floor uh braid for the main line, 50 to 60 pound fluorocarbon for the leader in a seven to eight aught circle hook. Uh, the key to catching the tarpon is to be nice to them when you find them. Stay away from, stay off of them. Let them come to you. Don't run your motors around them, and and they will bite. Uh, there's a photo there of a fish caught this this week by Nicholas Millette from Destin. Uh, that fish we we taped it link girth. It was 140 something pounds. So. That's a pretty respectable tarpon right there. That is a real respectable tarpon. Let's roll offshore, bub. Yeah, Rick, uh, starting Friday the 17th, red snappers are open for all in state and federal waters. And there seems to be plenty of fish on natural and artificial bottom in 80 plus feet of water. Slip sinker rigs with a live cigar minnow or herring is pretty much the go-to go -to, uh, technique uh, on the shallower spots. The red snappers, especially the bigger ones, respond really well to chunking with cut minnows. So, you know, use your anchor function on your road end, hold up above the bottom spot, start cutting minnows into quarters and just drop them in the water, drop them in the water, and those snappers are gonna come up to you and then free line a bait down to it. It's pretty cool to see big, bright red snappers eating just below the surface. And there's a photo of a nice red snapper caught and released uh, fishing with Captain Ken Carpenter uh, this past week out of Fort Walton Beach. You know, just days before the season opened, but at least Captain Ken knows where to go back and get them. And then staying offshore, uh, while you're out there bottom fishing, you know, targeting those red snappers, the vermilion snappers should be on your radar. Uh, they're going to be staying on the same type of bottom structure holding those red snappers. Uh, so use a two-hook chicken rig, a cut squid and, and minnows for bait, 
A lighter leaders and smaller hooks will, will catch the mango snappers. They're extremely good eating. Uh, I, I enjoy eating the real mango snappers way better than red snappers. So, Pat, I got a question for you. You know, do you, uh, the bays themselves, this time of year, we do get a lot of rain uh, throughout all of Florida. Are those bays still a tannic kind of brown when the water's coming out of the inlet there in Destin? Is it dark brown or is it cleared up a little bit? Man, Rick, it's, it's, that's a funny question because we have had a, quite a bit of rain lately and our bay, Choctahatchee Bay, is still really clear. I went to Panama City by boat uh, five days ago with the west wind and came home on the inside. Their bay is really, really tan. And, um, so it's almost a bay, bay to bay uh, um, difference. It's kind of strange. Yeah, man, I get it. That's part of it. All right, bud, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. Pat says that Inshore Red Snapper is opening on Friday the 17th for the recreational anglers in state and federal waters. Use live bait over bottom structure, and that's going to catch those reds. And then offshore, the hot and still weather means triple tail and Apalachicola on the floats and the markers. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. Well, you're going to want to come out and meet Captain Rick Murphy at the Blue Water Outriggers at 121 West Highway 98 in Port St. Joe on July 16th from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Rick, what are you doing up there? Well, we're going to put on a little seminar there at Blue Water Outriggers. Mm. We're also going to feed everybody that what? shows up. Yeah, man, you know, <laughs> Mr. George owns a Piggly Wiggly right next door, so we're going to get some big platters. We'll put on about a two and a half, three hour seminar. Ridge and I'll be there. And guess what? They were going to roll on home. Dinner and a show. How about? That sounds great. Dinner <laughs> and a like show more in like Port St. Joe. Oh, boy. I know. Go. Here we go. Get ready to get wet in the Star Tron Central West region. But first, Dave is showing us how to do that at Academy. Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques hat, at the CCA Workbench <laughs> stage. Yep, I am. We're going to be going through all this stuff here. I think I got 15 tips, and I doubt we're going to get to all of them. We we're will. going to try. I believe in you. 15. I believe in you. We'll be back. It's a big number. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Sirius XM Marine. Weather, fish mapping, entertainment. Academy Sports and Outdoors, have fun out there. Real legends, everything you need to live life local. Penn, let the battle begin. Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Stiffy, innovators in shallow water performance. And Daiquiri Deck, food, drinks, friends. Well, we're here at the CCA workbench and it's time for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques. Dave? Yes, sir. Let's roll, bub. Well, we got 15 things to talk about. So, uh, you know, uh, the first thing you want to do is you always want to go with a friend when you're going to go in a wading. You know, we talk a little bit about having some solitude, but, you know, if you're going to be wading around in the salt water, you know, with alligators around and some sharks around and some potholes you might fall in or some mud you got, might get stuck in. It's always good to have a friend. I had a friend had to come and get me out of the mud one time in, at the Mosquito Lagoon because I went in all the way up to my armpits, stepped off the shore and went all the way into my armpits up to the mud and I couldn't get out. If he wouldn't have been there, I'd have been in terrible peril. So always bring another fella. Terrible peril. Uh, yep. Uh, waiting, you know, when you want to start in a place, you want to pick your spots carefully. Uh, too much mud, <laughs> as I said, you know, you'll be fighting the bottom all day. You'll wear yourself out. Uh, good hard sand bottom is what you're looking for. Uh, any wading birds you see, that's a good sign. That's a good place to start probably. Um, we're gonna use longer rods. Uh, you got a seven foot rod here. Seven and a half is better probably. Uh, use longer rods so you can make longer casts. You know, your low vantage points takes a little bit of your cast off. Right. So you wanna use a longer rod. Um, well, they make this a battalion in seven and a half foot so you can get yeah, it. Yeah, 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 a nice extra fast action too because you want to have some backbone because you're going to be standing in the water and you're going to be moving the fish. You know, you're not in a boat. You can't go to him. You can't you, chase it. Yeah, you want to put some heat on him. Uh, move quietly, you know, smoothly. Try not to do much talking. 
you know, uh, you'd be surprised how fast your voice travels, especially when you're walking around in really shallow water. Mm -hmm. uh, spread out, and when you spread out with your buddy, you, it, it allows you to catch more fish because you can find the fish easier. You know, if you got two guys who are spread out a long ways away, the guy over on the left starts catching them, he can go, Psst, hey, we're catching them over here. Right. You can make a little walk. Uh, big trout like to get in the real shallow water in the early mornings. So, you know, concentrate when you first get there, to the really shallow areas, and then move out offshore as the sun gets up and you can catch your reds and whatnot like that. But the trout really like to be in real shallow water right when the sun's coming up. All right, we're gonna be using 15 to 20 pound braid, probably catch all the fish that that we're gonna get a bite out of when we're out there walking around. Now, what color diamond braid do you like? The green, the blue, orange, what do you like? Well, I don't care what color it is, as long as I can see it good. A lot of times, orange is great, but I usually use a lot of blue, yeah. and I have a, a really long 20-pound fluorocarbon leader. I tie extra long leaders when I'm waiting, because if I'm changing baits and changing baits, or you know, getting uh, caught catching fish and getting it chafed up, that way I don't have to keep tying. I can That's just keep good tripping. advice. That's I can just advice. keep trimming off a little bit of leader, trimming off a little bit of leader. I just take a little extra longer ones than I normally would when I'm waiting. Uh, top waters you can use all day. Um, you know, we, we talk a little bit about, you know, early in the morning or late in the evening for top waters. But you can use them all day, especially if you see fish eating on the surface, if you see trout harassing schools of mullet or, or redfish harassing schools of bait or mullet or anything, the top water will still work in the, in the heat of the day when they're out there feeding like that. Bait casters make good rods and reels when you're waiting, uh, especially if you're using those top water plugs that have a lot of uh, slack in the line. If you're like a chug bug or something, like, like one of those chug, chuggers right there. Cane walker. The cane walker, if you chug it and then reel in slack. If you're using a spinning reel, you have a good chance of making a wind knot or coming over the top of the spool. You know, a bait caster can get a, can get a backlash, but you know, if, you, if you're really good with one, you probably shouldn't have to worry about that. You get it adjusted right. You have a much better chance of getting a wind knot that can ruin your day uh, with a spinning reel. Uh, 10. High top tennis shoes are a good uh, wading shoe. Those are your shoes? Correct. Uh, don't use a low top. Use a high top because you can tie them all the way up to your ankle and you won't lose them in the mud. Yeah. If you use a low top, a lot of times the top of the shoe goes into the mud and when you pull out, boom. Th these, are, these are good, man. They, they don't are. stink? No, huh? Okay. And if you're going to use a boot, make sure you get a good boot with a side zipper that goes all the way down so you can get them on and off easy. Yeah. You know, the side zipper, you know, don't try to use the dive boot where you have to slip it on because, boy, they, they compress on you as well. When your feet are under the water, they compress on you. It'll squeeze your feet and your feet will start to hurt. Right. So, you know, use really long stringers if you're in a place where there's a lot of sharks and or some alligators, you know. It just, you know, it's always good. And then to do use you a, carry a bag for you can put your tackle in. Yeah, you can use use a little small bag. You don't need to, you don't want to carry everything. You know, I got a lot of stuff up here, but if you have just two or three of each one, Afco's uh, got this. Afco's got this. The, they got it's called the Urban Tank Tackle Bag, but it's a ta uh, angler bag. So you could put this on your waist and wear this on your back. Correct. And, you, and this one never has need the, to go home. No, and this one has the fluid too, so you know it's got exactly. The, yeah, you're drinking. You're, so it's. There you go. Fill that also, up with a margarita, uh, baby. <clears throat> weedless, weedless swim baits work really good in, weed, in, uh, in areas where you have a lot of weeds. The gold spoons are great, food. but last but not least, bring a big jug of water, a gallon of water, so that when you get out, you can wash all the sand and mud off here before you get back in your truck. Yeah. Good advice. That was a Dave, good one, huh, You Bree? did it. You made it. I you are I not Dave Farrell in Terrible Peril. <laughs> You're getting it. <laughs> Doing the stingray shuffle with alligators yeah. and sharks. Waiting's fun. All right, the window opportunity is key in the Startron Central West region for waiting, so let's see what Captain Jeff Page has to say about it. Tell us, Page. Well, you know, wade fishing in the Startron Central West region go hand in hand with just about every shoreline I can remember. You know, I remember back in 2003, we filmed an awesome wade show with Sportsman Adventures with a guy that was even more scared to get in the water back then. But he did, and we caught so many fish. We were in a little Maverick tunnel boat. It was awesome, wasn't it, Rick? It sure was. I've never had a day of wade fishing like that. I know. And the neat thing is, Rick, if you put your time in, 
you can still have days like that. Maybe not quite as epic, but still can. And it all starts with deciding one of two things. Am I going to go by boat and get out and wade? Or am I going to try to find a shoreline to wade out of my vehicle, be it my motorcycle, bicycle, car, whatever? So then, you know, once you've done that, um, land patrol by car, by bicycle, whatever, there's lots of areas in our region. And I'll start down south. You know, all that that whole shoreline from Stump Pass north to Tom Adams Bridge in Lemon Bay, there's all kinds of little accesses. You can park your car, get out, and wait. And Dave had some really good points. Um, a little chest pack is nice to keep your extra tackle in. And it, you can even put your phone in these chest packs because it stays so high up on your chest. Unless you're Texas waiting, you're not going to get it wet. And, you know, extra tackle, leader, hooks, jig heads, soft plastics, stuff like that. As you work your way north, you get into Venice. There's places on the beach that you can get out and wade around Casperson's Beach. And then Sarasota, same thing. Along the beach, there's accesses. And then in the bay, there's lots of accesses. Buttonwood Harbor, where we filmed another Sportsman Adventures. Great wading. And then some of the best wading is up around Fort DeSoto Park near Egmont Pass. All that being said, probably the best time of year for good wading and not too cold of water November, December. We usually haven't had a lot of front yet, and the tides are getting low. The fish know that winter is coming, and they really feed good. I've got a few wade photos not tonight. First one is of two of the most da dedicated, dangerous waders I know in our region. They're the Glunk brothers, Austin and Jake Glunk. And they go a lot by car, canoe, kayak. Very rarely do they go by boat. And then the second picture is their third amigo, Frankie Lippert, with a nice snook. And then the last photo is you and me. I did a screenshot of, I found the old episode, and I did a screenshot of you and me in the water. No. All right, you got two minutes left, Paige. Thanks All for right, that. All right, here we go. Tarpon fishing, really good. Probably would be one of the best seasons ever, but we've had a lot of westerly wind days, and you know that west wind ain't no good. Probably the best chance of catching a tarpon this week. Afternoon outgoing tides with the crabs under a cork around the backsides of all our inlets. Moving offshore, red snapper. Red snapper bite remains really good throughout the entire region, and everybody wants them. And even small bay boats haven't been able to get out this week to them, Rick. 90 to 120 feet of water, pinfish, frozen sardines. I've got a nice red snapper photo from Captain Jason Stock and two happy clients aboard the full sand in my last species. And it's not recommended for everybody, but the swordfish. Guys have been doing good with daytime and nighttime trips. They've been like 200 miles out, 2,500 feet of water. Y'all know the drill. Lights, rig squids, three different depths of water. That's Nick Froelich and his crew, Justin Prescott, with a nice sword they got during the day. Nice. All right, bud. Hey, real quick, Bree, are you ready to go fishing next week? Absolutely. Can't wait. It's been quite a while. All right. Captain Page says he's going to put you on a tarp in there, but girl. Sounds good. All right. I'll uh, see you guys at Daiquiri Deck next week. All right, bud. Thank you so much. Speaking of Daiquiri Deck, we need to take a look at the Daiquiri Deck inshore hot spots. He says, uh, look for snook and redfish. Fish the oyster bars around the mouth of Turtle Bay on the early morning incoming. Throwing bone topwater plugs like the Berkeley Jaywalker 120. And then offshore, mangrove snappers, nighttime relief and ledges, uh, the reefs and ledges, fishing in 110 feet of water with a shrimp or a pilchard. That's been pretty strong. Bri. Well, Daiquiri Deck cats out of the bag. Coming up June 23rd, which is next Thursday already, come on out to South Siesta Key Daiquiri Deck in Sarasota from 6 to 8 p.m. and hang out with Rick, Jeff Page, and myself for some fish stories. What are we smoking? Fish dip. Frozen drink specials, of course. And we got a lot of cool giveaways Ooh. and raffle prizes, Bri. What? Yeah, man, oh. I've been working on it for a month. Throwing them raffle prizes, and I'll have a few caught fish because I'll be fishing with Paige all day, going to the daiquiri deck. 
Oh man, it's going to be a good time. It okay. really is. And I can't wait to see all our fans over there on the West Coast. They turned out big for us last year, but we're going to go ahead and see a new group this yes, year. Yes, can't wait. Come on. All right, anglers, the Discover Crystal River Northwest and Fish Bites East regions are getting their waiting gear ready. Plus, we're saying hi to a friend from Sirius XM Marine when we come back. So stay with us right here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. What do you think? I think. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by PowerPole, Total Boat Control, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science, Bahio Sunglasses, Blue Light Blocking, Radically Clear Lenses, Blue Water Outriggers, Everything for Your Outdoor Adventure, R&R Tackle, From Our Tackle Box to Yours, Florida Coast Equipment, Your Local Kubota Dealer, Coast to coast, we've got you covered. And Garmin, plot your paradise. Now joining me is Jeff Leach, our partner from Sirius XM Marine. Jeff, you know, it's good to see you. We've got a lot of cool things to share with everybody. Some really neat updates that I'm really proud of that we have with Sirius XM. So why don't we uh, get right into it? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so let's talk about something that I think is really important. Whether you're a SiriusXM Marine weather subscriber or fish mapping subscriber or not, I want to go through a couple key features um, that we offer. Um, so we're mostly going to talk about radar, and let's look at this screen right here. So we're looking at weather radar, and what we're going to do is we're going to pan out and then zoom in a little bit, but we're looking at weather radar lightning here. This is overplayed on your screen, so this is right on your MFD comes down via satellite, not contingent on cell signal. Remember, this is satellite right to your display. Um, and we're looking at marine weather warnings here in that little pinkish red box. Now we're gonna zoom in a little bit. Really critical information here, especially for all the pop-up storm cells Floridians have around here. Um, really useful information. So let's zoom in one more time here. We're gonna go down to the keys and that is a weather warning we're looking at. Now, if you click on that weather warning, what's gonna pop up here is a full description of exactly what is happening in that area. And let me remind yeah. everybody that yep. this is exactly what you hear currently on NOAA, but the problem is you gotta go through the loop of the whole state and this and that. This gives you the exact location and you don't have to go through all the loop. Exactly, and the key here really is just leaving this running at all times on your boat. Your screen will literally start blinking and popping up in that pink and you'll know something's going on. Yeah. Uh, and then you click on it, you get the full report and you're good to go. And then what we're looking at here is our newest product, and this has been out a couple years, on a Garmin display, this is fish mapping. So anybody who's going offshore, in particular right here, we're looking at plankton fronts, sea surface temperature fronts, and of course in the areas where those coincide, where you have strong fronts, really much more highly likely area to find pelagic species of fish. That's right. And yep. back to the radar screen, yep. for sure, guys, remember that it's going to be moving. You can actually see which way the storms are moving towards you, away from you. If guys have a question about this, where would they go? What website? Yeah, so let's go to a couple websites. SiriusXM.com forward slash marine is our general website. Gives you everything you need to know about weather. Um, and then for fish mapping, go to SiriusXM.com forward slash fish mapping yeah. um yeah and so is there so what about support if a guy's a member and he's got lots of stuff that he wants to report back to you how can they participate absolutely so a couple things anybody needs has any technical questions or, or needs some support best way to do that is not call the 800 number but go right to our email and it's marine.support at siriusxm.com as well as, and we're gonna we're gonna plug this for anybody who's a current subscriber or soon to be subscriber we want to hear your stories Right? So if you had a cool weather story or a cool fishing story where SiriusXM came in handy, we love your stories. We love hearing your testimonials. And go to SiriusXM or go to marine.support at SiriusXM.com. Speaking of a cool story, yep. you're here because your daughter has her 12th birthday That's this right. week. We're getting her uh, certified. And she went fishing earlier in the week with Ridge and caught her first triple tail. And that's really cool. 
But you know what? You speaking of swag or free giveaways with the support, there's Brindley right with Miss Bree showing yeah. some of the cool yeah. products that you guys give away if they send in a story, right, Jeff? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Send in your testimonial story and we will send you some swag. I love it. Look at those yeah. girls all decorating all our cool stuff. Bree, where are we going have a next? Birthday girl right here with me. Yeah. This is some of the swag you're going to get. Happy birthday. Congrats on that triple Thank tail. You. That's <laughs> awesome. And we are going to head in to our next region, who is Jeff Hageman from the Discover Crystal River Northwest region. Jeff, what's going on over there? Surf fishing and wading can be a great way to fish my region. Uh, can be a very stealthy way to fish my region. A good pair of waders, uh, wading boots, or an old pair of sneakers is a must to protect your feet. You got a lot of sharp rocks, oysters, barnacles, and stuff like that. You don't want to cut your feet up, so make sure you have some good protection on your feet. Um, fishing the beaches, especially in the summer months, uh, snook, pompano, and whiting can all be caught the, on the beach waiting that in the swash channels. You want to fish parallel to the beach for the snook, the pompano, and the whiting will be out in the next little break. And it's a great way to re uh, weed fish and a great place to do that. Uh, the middle part of my region, you can't really get to it from anything but boat or a kayak or a canoe. But in the wintertime months, it can be really productive especially on the negative lows, you can get back there and get to places that a boat can't go, take your boat in there, get out of the boat, walk to these places, and on those negative tides, the fish will actually get trapped in there, and you can get in there and fish them. It's a great place to do that. Good pair of waders is a must. Like I said, there's a lot of oysters and stuff like that, but it can be extremely good and worth getting back there to go catch them. This week, all about grouper. Going inshore right now, Captain Jim Pollard of Big Daddy Sport Fishing is targeting the shallow water grouper inside Tampa Bay. He's using five feet of 50 pound fluorocarbon leader and a six aught circle hook, tail hook pinfish or grunt, free line over these structures. Uh, the slurring moving slack tides, you'll feel that thump. And there's big fish are down there right now on those bottoms in that shallow water grouper. We've got also a lot of grouper up in the uh, Crystal River area, Homosassa, and all those rock piles up there are also floating some inshore grouper. And I got a photo here of a great gag grouper inside Tampa Bay. Nice. All right, keep going, Moving bud. Moving offshore, we got some more grouper reports from Captain Rob Davenport, Big Nasty Charters out of St. Pete. Gag grouper, he's been catching them in 200 to 250 foot of water over hard bottom ledges. And he's fishing a 100 pound fluorocarbon leader, 12 ounces of lead, eight to 10 ounce circle hook. The live bait has been the choice right now. And he's using big porgies, um, big pin fish and big grass grunts. And I got a photo here of a nice gag from with David from Ohio with his first ever big gag. Nice. All right, what else? Captain Rob Davenport also reports the red grouper bite has been biting in 150 to 170 feet of water. Standard bottom rig, 60 to 80 pound fluorocarbon leader with a six to eight aught circle hook and 10 ounces of lead has been working best. Thread fin herrings tipped with sardines and squid has been the best choice. Live bait is also working too. And I've got a photo here of 81 year old Martha Brennett with a beautiful red grouper. That's nice. awesome. Go, go. All right, Hag, what else you got this week? You done? That's it, this week. The tarpon Man. bite's been a little slow in the morning with this moon right now, so fish those afternoon tides. That's going to be your best bet. All right, bud, good advice. Thank you for all the pictures. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Ozella Key Marina hotspots from the Northwest region. He says, inshore, snook around the beaches and passes. Use pinfish or sardines on the outgoing tide. And then offshore, mangrove snappers on high relief structure in 30 to 70 feet of water. Use cut sardines on a knocker rig for bait. All right, the Fish Bites East region is ready for your wade fishing needs, and all you need is access to shallow water. Let's go, Captain Holland. Yeah, you know, that's all key to wade fishing, finding access and finding good access. Once you find that, you can get away from the places that everybody fishes. Um, and we got some great areas in my region. There's walk-in access along in Lake Worth, um, really on A1A on Singer Island. It gets you into Lake Worth. And then if you like the, the Indian River, you can go out on the island, um, on Hutchinson Island, and, and get, get to access at Herman's Bay, Middle Cove, Fair Point or you can come off the island and go on Indian River Drive and get access at Walton Road, Savannah Road, and Torquay Road. And the real advantage um, of wade fishing is that it, 
presents a low profile, so you can get a lot closer to the fish and uh, have a lot better shot at it with at the fish without spooking them. Uh, the best places uh, to wade fish right now are mangrove shorelines or grass flats. You can throw everything from top water plugs to saltwater sets and sea shads or the regular shads or die dappers, or you can cut a live bait thing and uh, throw a small bait bucket and fish a live shrimp or a sand perch or a pilchard, either freeline them or, or put them under a bass and sass and quick cork. Uh, I got a photo, uh, Jason Arman of That's Our Man Land-Based Fishing Charters sent me this photo of, of a nice trout that his clients caught wading. They were throwing topwater plugs and Jason's a, a wade fishing guide out of Port, uh, out of St. Lucie County. You can call him up, you can find him on the internet and he'll take you for those wade fishing trips. The other bite we got going, the June tarpon bite is heating up with a full moon. We're starting to see more fish migrating up the beach and pushing into the inlets and also into the intercoast, the waterway. And then at the same time, there's concentrations of rolling fish in places like the north and south forks of the St. Lucie River, up in Good Mud Creek in the Indian River, in Harbor Ridge in the Indian River, and then up around the Boy Scout camp in the Loxahatchee River. The majority of the tarpon that are inshore are feeding on bait fish like mullet or pilchards or bunker, but you can also throw a, a four inch saltwater assassin Houdini colored sea shad. You see a fish roll, you throw it right on top of it, then it sinks for two or three seconds and just reel it very slow, and that'll get you the bite. Uh, the June full moon is also one of the best times uh, to drift a live mullet or a Fritzen herring out any of my inlets. Uh, in, really, you want to do the outgoing side at night on the full moon. Um, for fish on the beach, dark flies work well really early. In the middle of the day, it's a live bait game with either crabs or pilchards as a top bait. And while we're speaking of tarpon, they're one of the species in the CCA Star Tournament. That runs from now through September 5th. There's a ton of great prizes, uh, including scholarships and fishing trips. You can even win a boat. Uh, for more information, you want to go to ccaflstar.com, uh, and that will give you everything you want to know about the tournament. All right, let's go offshore, bud. Well, the summertime selfish fight is really starting to heat up as the fish start grouping up in the area. For the last week, there's been two bites going on, one in 80 to 130 feet of water and the other in 230 to 250 feet of water. There's free jumpers everywhere. So... You know, free jumpers tell you they're selfish in the area, so anytime you see one, you want to run to those and start fishing there. Otherwise, you want to kind of look for those same scenarios that you find, you know, that you're looking for with dolphin, like rips or edges or color changes, and that's where you want to start. A lot of the fish right now are loners, um, so they haven't quite grouped up yet. That's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. Most of them are big, bigger than the typical selfish we see, 40 or 50 pounds as the average fish right now. The most consistent action is coming on live pilchards, redfin, Spanish sardines, or goggle eyes, either slow trolled or power drifted on a kite. But you can also troll ballyhoo on a monofilament leader with a blue and white or pink skirt and do pretty well. The other bite we got going with this week's full moon, the mutton snapper is schooling up to spawn on the reefs in 70 to 100 feet of water, basically from Palm Beach all the way up to Fort Pierce. Some of the better spots have been the Loran Tower Ledge, the Six Mile Reef, some of the wrecks, like the Halsey and the Amazon, some of the ones that don't get hit as much. Don't overlook those shallow reef areas like Tex Lake and the Sand Pile. You can target the muttons with everything from pilchers to cigar minnows, but if you want those big ones, a grunt plug or a ballyhoo plug and jig combination, that works on those big fish really well. Just anchor up over the reef um, or, you know, just away from it a little bit over the sand. Start chumming with either ground chum, glass minnows, or juvenile pilchers. And the average mutton right now is going to be 5 to 10 pounds. But we're seeing fish up to about 20 pounds. There's really, has, really good mutton snapper bite going on right now. Has the heat affected the bass fishing, Mike? Uh, it has. You really want to get an early start. Headwaters Lake remains one of the top bass lakes in the country. It's producing both big numbers and big fish. I was talking to Nathan Shellen of OkeechobeeBassFishing.com. He said the key right now is to cover. Be on the water early, cover a lot of water until you find fish, and then work those areas hard. Uh, he's throwing, uh, he's working either around the floating or suspended hydrilla mats. He's either throwing a bass assassin logger toad or a fat cob rig senko style. And you can also throw uh, prop baits on the edges of the grass or slow roll a white spinner bait down the, you know, the edges of the grass as well. Right now, Shellen is also fishing a, a live shiners a lot uh, on the edges of the hydrilla. He said if you're shiner fishing, it's a 50 to 60, excuse me. 
50 to 60 fish morning. Lots of four, five, six pounders in there, but some really big ones as well. Uh, I got a photo there. Uh, Brian McCandless sent me this photo of Danny Cunningham with a nine pound, 10 ounce bass. He caught at Headwaters Lake. That fish ate a June bug colored fat job rig tanker style. All right, nice. bud. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you next week on FaceTime or Zoom, whatever the heck we use in here. The TNH Marine hotspots from the East Region is inshore. He says snook tarpon in the North Fork of the St. Lucie River use live mullet, pilchers, and a Houdini colored sea shad. And then offshore, wahoo and blackfin tunas 200 to 300 feet of water off of the breakers. High speed lures at dawn and live pilchards are working best. Here's something interesting. Did you all know that in the last seven years of the West Marine Star Competition presented by Yamaha, weight fishing is how two of the star tag redfish winners caught they're winning tag redfish. Nice. I didn't, I didn't know that. So over the years, we all know a lot of anglers have recaptured star tag red, but they weren't registered or they weren't CCA members. Do not let this happen to you, people. Registration is still open, and there's plenty of time to fish the star competition to win your share of $500,000 in prizes and scholarships. So go to ccaflstar.com to get registered. And, and for more info, we don't want to see that happen to you. Don't forget, so we have the Alta $50,000 redfish out there as well. Yes, we do. So we become a member and get registered. All right, coming right up, we're casting into the R&R Tackle Southeast region, but first Dave has some last minute Father's Day gift ideas at the CCA workbench for Taco Marine new products. I don't think I'm gonna fit my butt in these. Uh, oh, no. come on, Dave. You these for, a, if, a, if you're a father, you might have some little fella at home who could. There Aww. you go. Rick will. Yep. <laughs> Be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Alta Equipment Company, where uptime matters. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Fenwick, feel everything. Tin Cup Mountain Whiskey. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. Best lures, period. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. Well, it's time to troll the edge with Taco Marine here at the CCA workbench, Dave. And you know what? We got a lot of stuff. Let's yes, roll we do. right into it. First off there, we got the Pure Fishing Saltwater Gilly Baits. You know, these won the ICAST Best of Show last year. Uh, they were designed by the Bassmaster Classic champion Mike Iaconelli. And, uh, you know, they kind of have a little bit of a Japanese design to them. Um, but, uh, you know, he was heavily uh, influenced by that that Japanese swim bait type of right. deal. Uh, it's got a great natural presentation with the shape and, and the really soft uh, material that it's made mm -hmm. out of. Mm -hmm. It's impregnated with the power bait as mm -hmm. well. So, so th this is the croaker pattern. Right, it's got a hollow head and you know, it allows for to, to easily crush. You know, you think if it was a whole solid piece, it would be hard to crush down on a, on a hook, but you can really get to the hook with that thing. Um, so you, know, you can rig it sideways, you can sideways use a Texas rig, rig. you can uh, rig it with a jig head, uh, you can use a weighted swim bait hook. It's just very versatile. You can even do it with a drop shot or you can put a, a through bait through it, you know, I mean a through line hook. So go to purefishing.com and get you one of those. Okay. Next we have the Taco Low Profile Adjustable Seat Slide. It's a 13 by 10. It's got it's a detachable mount as well. It's got frictionless operation and it's easily adaptable. It's got high strength polymer guides inside and a durable locking action. So once you put it in one spot, you know if you're bumping through the waves, it's not going to come out. Uh, it's got seven positions in there. Uh, it's got a five and a half inch of, of uh, travel. Mm -hmm. So you know it'll hold a 23 by 28 inch wide seat. And it's got an aluminum chassis, so it's all made all in the USA. It's all high quality a lot stuff. Of stainless steel yeah, parts. Yeah, it'll take a it, it'll take you a, a long way for a long time. So go to Taco Marine. Okay. Com. Now for Father's Day, we got a lot of real legend stuff here. Okay. First off, you got the uh, Toddler Boys Real Tech shirt. 
It's a soft light wheel tech fabric with a UPF of, four, UPF of 40 and it's a quick dry. Next we got the little switch swim trunks that kind of match it there. Uh, they got an elastic weight with a UPF of 50. They have two front pockets that'll hold a lot of plastic army men and they got one back pocket for a frog and uh, a classic design. Nice little you know, waistband on there so little kids will, will keep up because they have a little belly like me. And, and the, those pockets, the pockets, just like the inside, they're all vented. Right, those are know? swim trunks. Yeah, yeah they so. are. Absolutely. So, I love that. Cool, man. Next along here, we've got the uh, Real Legends the Mariner 2 short sleeve fishing shirt. <clears throat> uh, looks good on the land or the sea. Lightweight, breathable fabric. Uh, two ex two expandable front pockets, nice uh, venting under the arms and on the back. You can go all the way through the back. Right. The vents there. Uh, the same shirt that I'm moisture currently wicking, wearing. Moisture wicking, quick dry. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really like these shirts. Really good shirts. The Mariner 2 from Real Legends. Yes. Also, we have the Real Legends packable jacket. I've got. There's a whole jacket in that little thing. You Come on. Zip it and pull the jacket out of there. The whole thing stores in itself. It's got a little pocket on the on the end what come yeah. on Dave yeah, you just zip that closed and there you've got a whole jacket and this is a rain jacket yeah what it's, kind a, of it's, jacket? A, it's a it's a, like a windbreaker uh, it's a lightweight you know portable it's water and re wind resistant um, it's got a nice uh, waterproof zipper on the front but you know it's not good for a good soaking rain it's a good you know it's a light jacket you know if you were wanting to wear it out when the wind picks up and, yeah a nice little, it's got a hood as got well. Got a nice little, a little hood, hood there. On top of it, yeah. adjustable hood. I yeah. love the zipper. You yeah. know, because most zippers today, they don't last very long. This right. looks like a zipper. That's it's gonna, a good zipper. It's going to last a little while. We'll keep the star keep bright a little zipper bit, grease Keep a little bit of the, of the rain from going down your belly. You got pockets. Well. How do I look? I look good. Yeah, you do look good. How, how do I look, Bree? You look like you need to zip it up. And oh, let me go on my way. All right, R&R &R Tackle Southeast region may not be a wade fishing hotspot, but with Captain Jimbo Thomas at the helm, he has plenty of other options for your weekend fishing excursion. Go for it, Jimbo. Jimbo, Jimbo you there? Yoo-hoo. Well. Jimbo. Rick, are you Jimbo today? Yeah, give me one second. I'll get Jimbo's report. I'm running for it as we speak. Well, I can tell you that in the R and R Tackle Southeast region, it's not really a hot wade fishing spot because it gets deep pretty. That's exactly Jimbo. what. I'm here. Well, come on, then. Give us a wading. What do you got going? What are you doing? Drinking a Budweiser? No, I'm not yet. But that's a heck of a great idea. Hey, everybody. <laughs> you know, I haven't noticed a lot of people wade fishing here in the Southeast region, and part of the region is that the water gets pretty deep very fast. Now most of the beaches throughout the region are fishing friendly, but you want to get out there early before that beach gets too crowded. One area in the south in, southeast region that is a common wade fishing spot is Matheson Hammock Park, which has good wade fishing for bonefish, sea trout, and barracuda on both the north and south sides of the park. And another good spot is off Hobie Beach on the Rickenbacker Causeway, and there's occasionally bonefish and tarpon caught there. In typical, uh, if you're fishing off the beach or wading, you want to fish with light to medium spin outfits with both live and artificial baits. Now, out to some real fishing, the catch and release snook fishing in the inlets is still the best bet inshore. Now, the snook are, have been schooled up in all the inlets of the region, and they're being caught on live uh, pilchards, herrings, pinfish, croakers, and mullet. You want to fish them near the bottom using a Jupiter rig. And a lot of these snook have been very big, you know, up in the 20 pound range or larger. So you want to use at least 50 pound fluorocarbon leader and 5.0 to 6.0 circle hooks. And if there's no live bait available, you can try working R&R &R flare hawk jigs or four inch bass assassin jerk baits along the bottom. And both the incoming and outgoing tides have been good early in the mornings or late into the afternoon into the evening. Now moving offshore, Dolphin fishing has finally started to pick up here in the past week. We've been finding dolphin anywhere from four to eight pounds schoolies from the six to 18 miles offshore. There's been very little bird activity, but the fish have been hanging under scattered patches of sargasm. That sargasm has been thick out there. Some days it's so thick it's hard to troll through. We've been trolling small lures, R&R, &R, uh, mahi magnets, and uh, assorted other lures. 
And then uh, when we find the fish, we've been picking live baits to them, pitching live baits to them. But in the mornings, it seems like the fish have been holding a little bit on the deep side. So if you pull up to one of those patches, put some live baits out, sit there. If there's fish there, they will pop up eventually. If not, pick up, move on to the next patch until you find the fish. But then later in the afternoons, it seems like the fish have been popping up to the surface, had a little bit of bird activity on top of, of them in the afternoon, and it's been making them a lot easier to do some sight fishing on them. Then moving in a little closer inshore up on the reef, the snapper fishing has really been picking up. The uh, nighttime mangrove bite has been like red hot pretty much the last few nights, just coming off this full moon. The mangroves have been anywhere from the two to seven pound range. They're being found on the outside reef in anywhere from 55 to 70 feet of water. And it seems like the outgoing tide has been where they're biting the best. Now you want to try to avoid anchoring up on top of the reef, but instead look for hard ledgy bottom with sea fans on the outside edge of the reef and then anchor up, fish with a knocker rig and just enough, just enough weight to hold the bottom. Use a 30 pound mono or fluoro leader, 1-0 to 3-0 hooks. Now the best baits have been ballyhoo plugs and cup bonita, but live baits will also do the trick. Captain Ryan Ormston and Captain Rain, Wayne Kahn aboard the party boat Reward out of Bayside, they've been not doing night trips, finding mangrove snappers, along with a mix of yellowtails and muttons on the reef off government cut. And they recommend not to put out any uh, block chum. This will attract a, little, a lot of little small fish and bait stealers. The only drawback is that the sharks have been really bad. They've been eating a lot of the fish they've been hooked. Now I got a, two photos here. First one, this is a photo of one of the many giant mangrove snappers that the reward has caught in the past week. Wow, that's a nice one. That is a nice Ooh. one. Now the second photo, unfortunately, this is what's been happening to a lot of those giant mangroves. Wow. So the tax man has been taking his, uh, his cut pretty regularly, not just on the reef, but everywhere it seems like lately. <laughs> hey Jimbo, I got a question for you. You know, a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with mahi. One day they can load the boat, then the next two weekends they go, and they can't even find one. What would you say is the most common mistake people make? Overrunning the fish. So a lot of these guys, especially on these fast boats, they think they want to get out there in front of everybody and they go right past the fish. For instance, this past Saturday, there was 5,000 boats out there. There was 100, the hundreds of boats in the n numerous different tournaments. Everybody went way out. We ended up catching fish in like 700 feet of water. We had a great day. We had 18 nice schoolies. Nothing huge, but we had a nice catch. And I was kind of dreading going out. I'm like, man, it's going to be really tough with all these boats. Everybody went right past them, though. Well, that explains it. That's why you, Jimbo Thomas, the captain on the Thomas Flyer, keep up the good work there, Jimbo. We're going to go ahead and take a look at what are we smoking fish dip from the southeast region. He says, inshore, catch and release snook and tarpon in your local inlet. Uh, using both live and artificial baits. And then offshore, look for the dolphin around the weed patches, the weed lines, and birds. And then anything floating anywhere from 6 to 20 miles offshore. But don't overrun them. Don't run past mm -mm. them. You start at don't 6 and it. go on out to 20. Take you all day, but it's okay. You ain't going to run past them. That's true. All right, and it's 40th year of the Key West Marlin Tournament featuring $50,000 in guaranteed cash prizes is planned for July 20th through July 23rd at the Perry Hotel and Marina in Key West. In addition to spectacular fishing and prizes, the event features nightly festivities, including cocktail parties, dinners, and an awards banquet. Entries are limited to 75 boats, so get registered now at keywestmarlin.com. All right, the Alto Equipment Northeast and Yanmar ASV Keys regions are keeping you cool this summer, so just wait a minute or two and we'll have your captains on the line after this. And remember, our annual kids fishing show is coming up next week. If you would like to be a part of our live studio audience, you can still sign up at our website, floridainsiderfishingreport.com. It's going to be a blast. It's been, what, two or three years? Yep. Woo, we got those babies in here. All the babies in the house. Oh, you bringing your baby? Uh, one. Bye. Not my baby, she's, my Mia. she's four. My Mia. Oh. my Mia, 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 Mia. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron.
CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Fenwick, feel everything. Strike Zone Fishing, Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. And Yanmar ASV, a leader in compact equipment. Welcome back. With the official start of summer early next week, the heat is on and the Alto Equipment Northeast region has the perfect solution to keeping you cool. Let's hear it, Tommy. What is it? It's, man, I don't know if I have the solution for that, Bree. It has been yeah, so dang hot in the last couple of days. I think I've my brain is just about all the way melted. I got a little bit left, at least enough for tonight. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers coming up this weekend. And you know, guys, we've got some really cool and unique wading opportunities here in the Northeast region. You know, most of our bottom, it's pretty dang muddy, which can make wading a little difficult. But if you stay closer to the inlets where the bottom's gonna be a little sandier, the wade fishing can be great. Now just make sure to wear some really good foot protection. You know, we've got tons of oysters and they can be as sharp as a razor blade. You can easily lose a toe out there. So good to get some good shoes if you're gonna do it. Now we do have one of the most unique and exciting ways to wade fish, and that's during what we call our flood tides. You know, when the tide gets up over about five and a half feet, the water's gonna get into the grassy marsh areas, that Spartina grass, Rick, we talked mm -hmm. about it earlier this week. Yes, sir. And, uh, and you know, they would, that area wouldn't usually have water over it until the tide gets really high. Now the redfish, they can't get access on a regular high tide to those areas because there simply isn't water over them. Those crabs that are up there, man, they're gonna really be hunting those things down. They tend to lose their minds over those crabs to get to those flooded areas. And you're gonna see them doing things like tailing, backing, and slurping crabs off the grass. Now those big tides happen a handful of times every year, mostly in the late summer and the early fall. And guys, it's really a ton of fun, no matter how you do it. Now, really it's a sight fishing. It's sight fishing that's best for us in our area. Now, aside from the flood tide stuff, another way to wade fish in the region is in the surf or along the beaches and in the inlets. And there's sea trout, there's ladyfish, there's whiting, there's redfish, there's flounder. There's all kinds of other species hanging in the surf and the inlets all summer long. And speaking of flounder, guys, I've got a picture here. Brandon Bradbury wow. sent me this picture of his giant flounder that he caught. He was wading a shoreline on the ICW in St. Augustine last week. Dang. And that's a 12 pound flounder, nice. man. Fish Woo! of a lifetime. So congrats, Brandon. You're the man. That's a, that is a beast. Matt. How about that? <laughs> Ding dong ditch on the doormat. That's awesome. <laughs> Love it. So guys, also <laughs> inshore, you know, we're talking about big fish here. Man, the tarpon season has really kicked off the last couple of weeks throughout the region. The bigger fish, they've started to show, show in better numbers along the beach. They're in the inlets and they are also behind the shrimp boats. Now they've been most active in the bait pods along the beach early in the morning. It seems like right about 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. They start to shut down as the heat of the day gets turned up and man, it's been getting turned up pretty quick here lately. Now the shrimpers, they really haven't been on much of a schedule as far as I can tell. You know, some of them are sleeping in, some of them are starting to drag right at daybreak. So, you know, it's kind of tough, but if you can time it right and drift back with their bycatch, there have been some tarpon in there. But you know what, the sharks are really thick and sometimes it's gonna be hard right now to get past those sharks, but it's doable. So get out there and look for some tarpon. Those tarpon in the ocean, they've been large sized, averaging about 60 to well over a hundred pounds. And I've got another picture here. This is my man, Brian Nasworth, with a nice tarpon that he caught with me earlier this week. We were fishing a bait pod right there along the beach in St. Augustine. Nice. Now guys, moving, moving offshore, you know, I spoke to a few of our offshore captains this week. They tell me, although the mangrove snapper haven't gone into full spawn mode just yet, they have been catching some big ones. We get those, man, it, I talk about it all summer long, we get them up to 13, 14 pounds. Now, Captain Billy Hunsicker from Endless Summer Charters, he tells me it's been a little hit or miss, but when it's been a hit, it's been really good. So he is catching some good fish. Now Billy's going to target those fish in the, on the reefs in about 120 feet on out to about 145 feet. Now all the guys that I've talked to this week tell me that the mangrove bite 
It's only going to get better offshore as we head into the next couple of months, especially around the moons. Now, also offshore, you guys, the kingfish, they've shown up in bigger numbers this week. The nearshore reefs and the wrecks have been loaded up with what we call snake kings. They're averaging about eight to 15 pounds or so. You know, the beach kingfish bite was pretty good this past weekend during the old school kingfish shootout, which was a kind of a beach only tournament. And the pogies were thick right there along the beach. And, you know, we actually saw quite a few kingfish skyrocketing through those pogies uh, we, as we were tarpon fishing this weekend, last weekend. Now the winning fish was right around 43 pounds, but there was quite a few good fish weighed in. Slow trolling a ribbon fish or a live pogey, that's pr pretty much gonna be the go-to through all the summer, you know, whether you're on the beach or offshore. And I've got one last picture here. Our buddy, Brad Brittenson sent me this picture of his son, Ollie, with a nice kingfish that they caught while fishing the old school kingfish shootout. I think Ollie landed in 11th place in the junior division. So good job, dude, way to go. Love Ooh, seeing those, job. love seeing those kids Kiddos. out there, Tommy. Speaking of kids, what are you gonna do this weekend with all those girls for Father's good Day? <laughs> I'm actually, we, we are actually, uh, my wife and I are actually going out of town without the kids. What? Hey! Best Father's <laughs> Day, yeah. just kidding. We'll, we'll be back for Father's Day. We're gonna do a big dinner and we'll, we'll do it up. So. <laughs> We're dumping the kids. We're not celebrating Father's Day. <laughs> I once read a, a meme that said like new mom, they stayed home with the kids and they did all the stuff with the kids and then a pro mom tip, she booked a flight out of town and went to a hotel by right. herself. That's right. <laughs> it's gonna be mean to you. Oh, that's mean. <laughs> Just kidding, dads, you just man. Want, what? Yeah. All right, dude. Thank you Breakfast so much. In bed. I there think before go. this gets out of control, we probably ought to look at the strike zone hotspots from the northeast region. Inshore, tarpon in the inlets and along the beaches. They have been <laughs> most active early in the morning. And then offshore, the kingfish are thick along the beach and around those nearshore reefs. Bree, I think we were getting ready to come off the track. We came off Whoa. the track. Listen, I'm a mom every day. Your dad every day. It's nice yeah. to be able to just Bye. Just kidding. Well, I honestly can't think of anywhere else than the Yanmar ASV Keys region. I'd rather be in the water doing pretty much anything, let alone wade fishing. So let's hear where we'll have the most luck from Captain Sarah Stanzik. Go for it, Sarah. Hey, everyone from the Yanmar ASV Keys region. Wade fishing is another one of my personal favorites, but I will say where I live in the Upper Keys on Murata, it is somewhat tricky because our flats are pretty muddy and soft, so it's kind of hard to walk around that much. But as you go down south more towards the lower keys, there's much more firm limestone bottom and there's some spectacular wade fishing that can be found down towards Key Westmore. You'll want to look for calm winds and moving water on the flats and sandbars of the lower keys. Plan to go earlier in the day, watch for those calm waters as the tide starts to move in or out and look for wakes, pushing water or tailing fish. You can use an eight weight fly rod with a small lead eye shrimp or a medium to lightweight spinning outfit pulled with like 10 pound braid connected to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader with a little 316 bonefish jig or live shrimp. And that'll fool a lot of bonefish permit and redfish on those flats. And here's a fun picture, put this picture up. One of my favorite wade fishing photos of all time. Oh, oh. that is awesome, <laughs> mama. That's Catching so cool. a bonefish. And if you look really close, her little banana toy is like dangling. Oh, <laughs> oh that's so cool. Oh, Leo has that. <laughs> It's the banana toothbrush, right? <laughs> yep. Bananas are good luck. Yes, they yeah, are. Yeah, they are. Let's sure change we got. that. They certainly Not were that, that day. Lately. They're elusive. They're hard to catch. They're a challenge, but they're really fun fighting fish. One of my other favorite fish to catch. They've been seen tailing on the flats lately on the really slick, calm days that you can attempt to cast at them that way. Again, it's very hard and tricky. They're so spooky, but it's such a thrill when you hook one. A lot of times we catch them by accident too when you're targeting other fish like goldfish or you know tarpon you'll catch a permit doing that but we'll take a permit anytime any day here's a picture of captain johnny johansson and his client with the permit all right cute good good yep. fishing all right what else you got for us offshore moving offshore we've caught a handful of swordfish have been around this past week the weather's been really calm and slick a lot of days, so a bunch of people have been going all the way out there, making the trek 25 to 40 miles offshore to those swordfish grounds. The best water depth for catching them is anywhere between 15 and 1,800 feet deep. For bait, you want to use a whole squid or a mahi, a bonito belly strip, and you'll drop that bait all the way to the bottom and make long drifts with your boat. Drift all the way down the ledge there. I have a good story to tell, so you can put up this picture. Take a look at that fish hanging. It's 481 pounds. 
that family booked a charter from the marina, a swordfish charter. They, they caught a fish on their charter, and they went out the next day on their own boat for fun and caught that 481-pound fish by themselves. Oh, my God. Day. That's because they, so that's had, a good story. they had a good teacher in the uh, daddy Nick there, man. It's hard to beat. Yep. That's, that's amazing. That's so awesome. Good for both of them. I'm, I would quit sword fishing. Yeah. <laughs> tell us about <laughs> tell it. us about the blackfin tunas. Take your time. Yep, blackfin tuna been offshore too. Lots of different options for sizes, big ones, small ones. They all taste great. Uh, live pilchards, cigar minnows, popular baits, vertical jigs, poppers, any of those. You can use the hook tuna as well. A setup like a pin 65 to 7500 is a good size reel for catching them. If you want to go offshore to the humps, or you can look for birds and you know debris and stuff around, bait jumping, you can cast into those areas of action to target the tuna. Definitely bleed the fish for the best meat quality when you get them on the boat. And try some sushi. Some blackfin sushi is some of the best. Like, it's my favorite sushi in the Keys, for sure. So here's another good picture of our friend Frank, who caught that. That's a big blackfin in that picture, big as they get down here. Look at his so face. He's so I got happy. A couple, I know. <laughs> got, got a couple questions for you. One, how do you like to bleed those black fins as soon as you catch them? I, if you just grab them by the gills, by their throat, they have a little membrane like right under their gills. You can just poke your finger right through it and that'll be it. Like that'll, that'll bleed them out. You can just run your finger through the gills or you can just take a knife and do it too and just throw them right in your cooler. Gorilla style with a fingernail. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yep. it's like pulling the radiator <laughs> True, it might be easier for us girls with fingernails. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I got another question for you, Sarah. You know, I know you have this love for bonefish. Do you like to fly fish for them or you like to throw light tackle with a spinning rod? I'm a lot better with a light tackle spinning rod. I haven't fly fished that much, to be honest, I'm, and it's hard. I just need to practice more with fly fishing. I'm sure I would be better at it if I practiced, but I've caught almost all my bone fish in my career on live shrimp with like a spinning rod. So you'll see me help the little kids cast next week at the kids show. I think they put me at the casting booth, so. All right, and I know we'll you. And she can do it with then. a baby on her back too, yeah. so. I know, just... I, know, I know you got a new Garmin dive watch can't wait for you to come back for the dive show that we have at the end of the year and tell us all or towards the middle of the year and tell us all about how well that works oh yeah that's gonna be great can't wait all right we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the shallow sport boats hot spots from the uh, florida keys region our girl says inshore tarpon have been biting well around the bridges in the channels where there is good water flow try to hit the outgoing tide and use live mullet or crabs and then offshore mutton snapper bite has been red hot head out to 100 to 200 foot depths uh, use pilchards ballyhoos pinfish on a 5-0 circle hook rig and don't forget that 20 to 30 foot long leader and that one pound weight depending on the current. You know, I've tried to put Leo in a backpack. He does the back arch and then he starts pulling my hair. It's just not good. She just looks so comfortable in that backpack. Yeah, I don't blame him. Sometimes you can do it and sometimes you just can't. All don't, right, we've got a blame him few tournaments in the Florida Keys to tell you about. First up, we have the VFW tournament that awards over $50,000 in total cash and prizes, including $5,000 for the heaviest dolphin and newly added super prize of either a Toyota Corolla or $20,000 in cash winner's choice. Next is the Gold Cup Tarpon Tournament. Up to 25 self-proclaimed tarpon addicts compete in this all-release event known locally as the Wimbledon of Tarpon Fishing. Partial proceeds benefit the Guides Trust Foundation of the Florida Keys. Then we have the Florida Keys PBA Dolphin Tournament. The more boats that register, the larger the payout, including a grand prize ranging from $5,000 to $15,000 in cash for the heaviest dolphin fish. Proceeds are to benefit the Autism Society of the Keys. Lastly, the Ladies Let's Go Fishing Screaming Reels Tournament. Novice anglers fish inshore and offshore during this casual and fun competition as part of the Ladies Let's Go Fishing University. For more information on Keys tournaments, go to flakeys.com. All right, we're heading into the Casa Vieja Southwest region coming up, so stay hooked and stay cool, and we'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Shallow Sport. Penn. Let the battle begin. The Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. The IGFA. Every fish, every water, every angler since 1939. Island Lures. Tournament Tackle. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. 
fishing for adventure, and Taco Marine, Troll the Edge. Pour in performance with StarTron. StarTron helps cure and prevent ethanol fuel problems for all engines and all seasons. Eliminate engine depleting gum, carbon, and varnish. Improve fuel economy and even rejuvenate stale fuel. StarTron stabilizes fuel for up to two years so you can store your engines with confidence. Start, run, store with StarTron. At Florida Coast Equipment, we understand you don't work banker's hours, so neither do we. You have a business to run, you have a family to feed, and you need your machine up and running. So our service team and our parts department will be there. If that means we have to stay late, we'll do it. If we have to start early, we'll do it. Because at the end of the day, you want equipment you can depend on and people you can trust, and we have a service team that will be there to service you. All right guys, Scott Martin here with your Power Pole Tip of the Week. You know, I travel all over the country fishing the Bassmaster Elite Tour. I'm gonna show you a couple tips on some preventative maintenance that'll help you keep your power poles in good working order. All right guys, so what you're gonna do is just remove the shroud and you can see the nuts and the bolts right here. So you've got the nuts on this side. You're gonna wanna tighten these up pretty darn tight. This is what keeps the pole from swaying around a lot. Tighten these up really nice and snug. The, the five nuts here and these bolts, you're gonna wanna tighten those up again snug and even that's the most important thing just check these periodically as you travel up and down the road check them when you get to your locations the other thing the bolts that are connected to your bracket to your jack plate make sure you check those on a regular basis as well over time things do get loose so guys that's my tip one minute tip power pull tip of the week we'll see you the Casa Vieja Southwest region with Captain Ronnie Houston is ready to get you on the good spots this coming Father's Day weekend so Ronnie close us out well, I'd like to uh, start off by saying, you know, I, I developed a passion for the outdoors because my dad took the time to take me fishing. So all those dads out there, I'd like to wish you all a happy Father's Day. When it comes to wading in southwest Florida, there's no shortage of options throughout the whole region, especially the beaches. And presently, there's plenty of snook right now, cruising tight and on your lower stages of the tide, you want to start fishing out towards the troughs. Another good location right now would be from Hickory Pass to Carlos Pass, Concentrate off the east side of the road, and ideally your lower stages of the tide are really generally the best. Also, York Key to Demir Key, and the Two Pines all the way to Ponds Park area. These areas of the sandbar are generally completely exposed on your negative tides, and when they are, you can fish off the edge out of the deeper water out to the west, or if there's still some water out to the east, you want to concentrate on wading and casting the potholes and troughs. Now, most species you'll be catching in all these areas are snook, redfish, trout, and believe it or not, with all the rain we've had, there's plenty of juvenile tarpa right now that have made an appearance. And all you're simply going to need is some maybe 2,500 to 4,000 series reels, some fly gear, or some 7 foot to 7 foot 6 medium sized rods, simply 20 to 40 pound fluorocarbons, and a handful of top water walker dog lures, buck till jigs, or just simply using gold and silver spoons. Or you can also use soft plaques to shrimp and paddle tails on a jig head. Or if you're on the beaches, make you some pilchers along the beaches. Now as we go on the inshore side, the bite that's really picked up has been the snook. Captain Corey McGuire to the north from Santa Bella Stump Pass tells me snook are now making their way out towards the beaches and passes for their annual spawn. While to the south, Captain Brian Sanders tells me from Lostman's River to Indian Key, snook are also doing the same thing, but with the amount of rain we've received, it's really pushing them out of the backcountry and lining them up on the outside. Now both captains are telling me incoming tides and outcoming, outgoing tides Midway point have been the best, and the current is going to be the key to trigger a good bite. Simple baits to be using right now in those areas are live pilchers and pinfish on your heavy current tides. If it's slack or it gets real hot late in the afternoon, cut ladyfish and mullet on your slacker tides. But top water walk the dog lures, your bass assassin die dappers, and five inch sea shads, or simple white and chartreuse bucktails and golden silver spoons. And I got a picture of a nice uh, snook recently caught while fishing with Captain Brian Sanders down to the south. Your offshore bite, the permits. 
got Brian Sanders reporting good opportunity right now from Bossman's River to Marco Island, and he's strictly concentrating on fishing wrecks. Really been a great year, year fishing for them as well. As Captain Corey McGuire to the north from Santa Bella Stunt Pass, he's aiming in depth right now, 30 to 50 feet, and he's concentrating on the wrecks. Both captains are telling me live crabs have been the number one bait. You can use the run and gun method or simply anchor up 40 to 60 pound fluorocarbons, either free line or weighted, weighted and unweighted, depending upon where these fish are in the water column. Recent pictures caught to the south with Captain Brian Sanders and to the north while fishing with Captain Corey McGuire. Now with the opening of red snapper season all through the region, bite is great through the region, especially on your moderate weather days running out that far. Bite is starting in depths of 140 foot and beyond, concentrating fishing structure and bait stacks. Now you can also drift to find the fish that or marking fish on your bottom finder and anchoring up. Now all the captains are telling me good moving current has been triggering a good bite and once you get in those areas limits quickly. Slower moving tides you might have to work for it. But cut baits like herring, squid and cigar minnows. Also make sure you have some live pinfish with you. Try to cut baits first. Fish don't cooperate. Live pinfish should trigger the bite. And I got a picture of uh, hog wild charters with a nice limited red, red snappers out of Benita. And uh, the manager out of Bass Pro, a good buddy of mine, Chuck Stevens, went fishing with him with a nice red snapper. Father's Day weekend, kids <clears throat> and mom, don't let me find out you didn't take the old man fishing. Hey, <clears throat> hey, I know you've been getting some reports from Mike Avenon. Ronnie, how's he been doing as far as in the Naples, which is pretty much the middle of your region? You know, all captains are doing great. You know, you got fishy business out of Naples, Cap Mike Avenon out of uh, Naples. Uh, you got also Hogwild Charges Benita and Captain Bo Johnson to the north. Concentrate right now on 140 and beyond. Good weather. Should have no problem getting a limited red snapper. All right. Well, thank you so much. Like Ronnie says, we want to wish everybody a happy Father's Day. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Caddy Can hot spots from the southwest region. Ronnie says, inshore redfish, Coon Key to Pavilion Key early in the morning on the outgoing and the late afternoon high along the outer Gulf Islands using live and cut baits. Next week, we are talking about the smelliest, the cutest kids the smelliest fishing. Kids fishing. <laughs> it's only. That's the species. <laughs> it's only appropriate to follow Father's Day week. Of course. To then have kids. The kids. To the remind fathers. us what. You can't have kids without fathers. What well. we've done. <laughs> we celebrate us and then we bring them in. <laughs> we've done a magical, beautiful thing. We're so excited. You can still sign your kids up make sure to go to our website we're gonna have knot tying we're gonna have games we're gonna have casting, casting giveaways it is gonna be so much fun i think all Maybe the kids are getting a little toys. goodie bag toys rods and reels, rods from, and reels. from pure fishing yeah, yes. yeah. Maybe I'll bring Molly shows up, get show. it's gonna be fun right. if you're not here you're missing out so make sure you register sign up Happy Father's Day to all the daddies out there. Happy Father's Day to our captains, to our dads, you guys, my hubby. Hey, we'll see and you don't next forget week. to have your little drinky drink over the weekend, little tin cup. I will. For the daddy. <laughs> <laughs>